We just wanted you to look at us for a second. <laughs> What'd you say? This is the Tomorrow Show, and I'm Aaron D. I'm Mike V, and AC will be joining us a little later in the broadcast. He's going to take us on a secret trip to his beat lab. So stay tuned for that. This is Gandalf. This is Gandalf. He uh, is AC's cat nephew and uh, also a, a wizard, a wizard himself. So. I hope you all are doing great. Um, this is our first official episode. We had the housewarming party. Yeah. This is our first official episode. And if I call her honey, uh, it's because they happen to be my partner. And uh, we live together here in this cute little uh, tree house. And We've got some furry pets of ours that we call our kids and stuff like that. Yeah, all the all that cringy stuff. <laughs> but um, we wanted to welcome you into our home. Uh, we want to reach out to this Twitch community, uh, the greater digital community at large, and uh, just let people know uh, that we want to get to know you. We want to be a part of your community, and we want to help connect the dots throughout this community and beyond. Hey, not Gandhi. So that we can do the work. And that work is what the network's all about. That's what the network is about. Transformational change for mental health in our communities and just overall health, I'd say. Don't you agree? Yeah. Uh, you want to say anything, of some words of welcome on our first inaugural show? Um, we just kind of want to have a place for people to you know, get some, some ideas and feelings of how to, you know, get through the day, every, everyday little things that help us get through the day and, uh, yeah, so, get to tomorrow. So this show yeah, in, in so many words, the tomorrow show is all about celebrating what the, the little things, right? Yeah. The little things and the, uh, yeah, the small moments and small little little things that make us happy and um, things that fill up our hearts mm -hmm. with hope. Yeah. And things that feel like we have a purpose in that moment. And uh, also just the small things that make us smile. Why? Why is the Tomorrow Show doing that? Why is the network doing that? because we really have to remind every human being walking around that your brain is a complex organ that runs the show in your entire body. So how is it not part of your everyday health conversations? And how is it not related to every damn thing in your life? Mental health is everything. And the show is about celebrating the little things that get us through to tomorrow so um i wrote a little something honey okay should i read it <laughs> yeah all right let's try this out this is how we're going to start this thing welcome to the tomorrow show this show is all about reminding communities across the world that together there is hope for us hope for us network wink wink so we'll be celebrating self-expression in all of its unique forms and we're going to learn about a bunch of new forms all along the way. With that, if you are watching right now, uh, be thinking. 
Have your thinking cap on. You're part of this. You're the you're the hive mind that is needed because we all have perceptual blind spots. If we all work together, we can fill those in and we can make sure we're addressing this in a unified front. We, we're going to battle, folks. Transforming mental health in our communities is not going to be an easy task. A task. Easy task. But it, so let me first tell you who I am, a little bit about myself, and then I'm going to pass it to my lovely spouse, Aaron. Before you do that, why is why is it uh, important to address mental health in our communities? Because people are dying. Yeah. And people are dying every day. And people are dying from things that are preventable. When uh, breast cancer uh, rates were really high in the 80s and the 90s, I learned this story from our chairperson. Carl Evans uh, blew my mind. Talked about how before breast cancer awareness was a thing, a lot of people were dying, and unnecessarily so. And once you get that pink ribbon and you, you get some celebrities back in it and people raising up that voice and talking about it, now people are being proactive. Yeah. They're using preventative care. The way that modern medicine allows us to, this advanced species that we've become. Okay. So, we want to kind of think about that. Do we talk about suicide? Do we talk about mental health as we should? Or does it still stay shrouded in stigma and silence? And come on, you know the answer to that. Yeah, and I think more, more and more people, especially with the pandemic and in quarantine, when everybody was in quarantine, uh, you know, all of that stuff really came to the surface for a lot of, a lot more people than even before Agreed. so uh yeah we just want to keep talking about that and breaking the silence around that and if you go you take that breast cancer example which is very very uh important pervasive prevalent across society a lot of people affected by cancer fuck cancer excuse my french take that fast forward breast cancer awareness is a huge huge deal and guess what people are survivors and there are a lot more of them as a result of taking that conversation you can hear it it's whispering now you're turning it up a little bit now people are buzzing and shouting and hooting and hollering and people are having a better shot you know what i'm saying so um that's how we're going to tackle mental health in our communities and it and it includes every possible shade of health if you if you think about it what we eat, what we put in our body, what we do, where we live, our atmosphere, the, the pollution, the the weird shit in our food, all that. Yeah. All right. So we'll be touching on that um, through every intersection we possibly can in the weeks and months and years to come of our programming. Our, our do you hear cat. that? Do you hear that? <laughs> our what? cat do is. Do we have reindeer on the roof? I think he's pushing things off the table as they do, you know. He wants our attention right now. He's like, you guys going to do a TV show? Fuck your TV show. Knocking things up and see. Yeah, whatever. So. He is naughty. Uh, all right. So, so introductions? Yeah. All right. So my my name is Mike Van Opel. Mike V for short. Um, it's an affectionate title given to me by our co-producer, co-host, AC. Um, so I'm a songwriter. I'm a band leader. I'm a mixed media artist sometimes. I'm a writer sometimes, I'm a lifelong educator, I'm a, and I'm part of this community. I've shared my own experiences living with bipolar disorder and worked with some amazing people in all areas that most definitely do intersect with public health, all with the same fierce desire to help others not go through the same bullshit they went through. Or what I and along the way, I've seen countless shining souls. I want to do the same. So if I may, uh, just I want to tell people about the network and what it means to me. And yeah. then I'll, I'll uh, give it over to you. The network means to me uh, is very personal because my favorite thing in the world is to bring people together, to uh, take all of those circles of lovely individuals hanging out and get groups that don't usually hang out, to hang out together. And we learn together. 
Um, and I said that a bunch on the housewarming party, that the best way that we can do this is that we get together and we, we talk and uh, we learn together. Not everybody knows everything. So the network is built upon the very same desires I just described about fierce lived experience, advocacy and truth and honesty and addressing brutal, often painful conversations. And it's uh, bringing together incredible, incredible human beings dedicated to a mission in which we push for transformational change to support communities wherever we possibly can, wherever we possibly can. And to do so, we're going to need everybody. Um, so thank you all chiming in in the chat and being here. Um, I hope you're all doing great today. Please sound off because we need everybody, no matter what sector you come from that you are in. Let us know because uh, we need to learn from one another. And in that same spirit, I want to pass it off to a person who's taught me more than I could possibly uh, tell So you. I'm going to explain what this is about. Last night, there was a fly that had flown around in this corner. Doing, and buddy? so I think he's still thinking uh, along those lines. Um, As the show grows, we'll have to get a cat handler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, somebody write that down. <laughs> Aaron, um, what's so up? Who are you? I, uh, I'm with the network because uh, mental health and mental health awareness and outreach means a lot to me. Uh, I have my own uh, struggles and stories with mental health and uh, a lot of my, my closest friends and family do too. So it's always been a very personal, it's always touched me really personally. Um, so I really want to get the word out about I really want people to feel good. I want to make people feel good. I want people to have resources and uh, all of that just means a lot to me. So uh, I suffer with depression and anxiety and uh, I have uh, like, it's called skin picking syndrome. So I, I pick at my skin a lot. Um, I have some social anxieties, you know, that there's just a lot of a lot of anxiety and compulsion stuff that I I have. Um, and what else? Well, let's let's uh, let's tell the world a little bit about who you are, too. Oh, I know, like I know, what I, I like you, to do. You are a so, fierce, fierce. You're like one of the fierce people I was referring to when I said fierce a bunch. <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I like, I work at a cafe. I really enjoy making coffee for people. And I um, like to do lots of crafts and I like gardening. And so we're going to bring a lot of that kind of stuff into play. Um, Bad kitty. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you say your pets give you a lot of joy though? They do. They, they frustrate me and make me feel a lot better about stuff to take care of something uh even if it's just a house plant and we'll get into that too in uh, a segment that's going to be debuting and recurrent uh later in today's show what's the name of that segment nature is amazing and so are you that's lovely i look i like the title of that yeah so we have lots of naturey stuff uh to do he looks very cute right now He's a very handsome boy. Very handsome boy. He started out like this, and now he's like, "Oh no, he's huge, yeah, man! Yeah. You big, you big arm." He's like this. Is this? Uh, you see? We're gonna talk about the cat too much. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> With that, would you like to tell anybody else? Tell them anything else about like stuff you like to do? Oh, I've... can I can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, how did we first meet? So we were both. Uh, working at a school i worked for the ymca and after school programming and mike was a teacher at the same school and he would leave right like right after i got there so we would ships passing yes and so uh yeah you, so, you always cared about kids you were always amazing with kids and that was actually part of uh 
why, why I was drawn to it. Same. Same. I was a special. I was like, who's that guy? Yeah. And we, uh, and we have a, yeah, we have a friend who also, she worked at the school and at the Y. And so she would, she kept kind of planting the seeds with me. That's, that's my friend, Mike. That's Mr. V. That's Mr. V. And I telling me about him and I was definitely intrigued. And so she really helped us. And last year around this time, she uh, married us over in kind of like Lincoln uh, near the lake. We were right by the museum, which I was going to ask you about. Yeah, right by the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum where I volunteered. So it was you really volunteered at the nature museum. Really gorgeous. Yeah. I know she cool. volunteered there. I just, I want you to know. So yeah. And uh, when I first uh, started getting to know you and we'd go do stuff together, you were volunteering in the butterfly sanctuary at mm -hmm. the Peggy Notabart, the aforementioned Peggy Notabart, the world famous. Peggy Notabart Nation Museum. <laughs> and she had this lab coat. And uh, I would visit them and they'd be separating the chrysalis. Chrysalis? Chrysalis? Sure, yeah. The chrysalises? Chrysalises? And it was, they looked like little candies or like little gems or something. Some of them did. Some of them looked like crunchy leaves. And... Some of them are as small as your little pinky nail. It's amazing. And so I was like, I guess she's a magical wizard butterfly. So I felt it would be best to first, you know, spend a lot of time at that museum and like pick her up and, you know, hey, you need a ride? So she didn't have to ride the bus. Um, and that was just like acts of service, right? Which is uh, a love language. Oh, folks. love languages. Yeah. Okay. And um, then ultimately, I learned like, a crazy amount of information. If you ever get a chance to go to that museum, go. <clears throat> Very cool collection. And as a result of your time there, you ended up doing some some other super weird shit. I was like, whoa, this girl is, uh, she is different and I love it because she's just going to like be totally herself. Yeah. What, what am I talking about? I started getting into doing taxidermy through the museum. Which is kind of a, was a paradox for me at first. Yeah. Cause because I'm, I've been a vegetarian vegetable. for 15 years. Oh yeah. Sure. Like yeah. actually that long. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. And it, it, what was funny though, is that a lot of the people in the collections kind of taxidermy area were also vegetarian. So like lots of, um, lots of women who, who, uh, are vegetarians that were really just interested in the science and the that's that's the thing that's the, the thing. nature the part of part. it yeah and like we all really really love animals and all of the yeah and all the animals die of natural causes yeah it's so not like people are going out and popping off chickens to stuff them yeah like so there's like something about people to eat. something about that like m making their death more meaningful or something that's kind but, of beautiful that's but we beautiful. yeah we could go into that for like a really long time and sure but um, yeah so th those are some things i like to do anyway he helped people, me he helped me get there i so. wanted to be able to get to know you yeah and i love your tomato dress i must say where'd you get that <laughs> tomato dress any tips for the the viewers uh they're called what are they called winter water factory they mostly have winter water factory they mostly have baby like kid clothes, but then they Is have this a some... baby shirt. <laughs> no, but they have they have some stuff for parents too. But they're really cute. Oh, cool. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I want to uh, shout out some pretty amazing, dedicated people that have made this all possible. Uh, before we go any further, okay. While I'm doing that, um, would do you want to check the the Twitch stream on on my phone and see if there's a yeah. See if there's any activity that we need to be shouting out. Um, first of all, got to thank Aaron Dunbar, Aaron D here. Um, I got to thank AC, our co-producer, because bringing all this energy to it. Uh, Carl Evans, our chairperson. Christina Bravo, just making things look awesome. Marlo, uh, Marlo, so awesome that uh, our first programming was Spanish bilingual program of yours. Oh, Marla's so um, awesome. Marla Reyes, you are amazing. 
so please uh, rewatch the broadcast of that show, Kakwamasi Dramas, and then uh, Kate Smith, uh, Kate Smith, uh, where creativity and mental health collide, or maybe I reversed it. If I did, I'm sorry, Kate, but Kate is brilliant. And Ben Matson, interviewer extraordinaire. Uh, I feel like, I feel like there is um, an art to interviewing, and he's he's a natural. Yeah, Wouldn't he's a good he's a good listener. Yeah, good listener makes a good interviewer. And uh, so Ben, we see you in the chat too. By the way, cool cat. Um, let's see. Am I forgetting anybody? Oh, Bree Kelly. Thanks for helping with the housewarming. Bree Kelly's gonna be featured on the tomorrow show at some point here coming up. And uh, Myron Levan, who's going to be our guest later on the program today. So Dan Lampton, Dan Lampton, right? Yeah. Hugs to Dan Lampton. <laughs> um, Dan helped with the housewarming broadcast and uh, lovely, lovely person. Um, uh, Jay, 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 what's up? Thank you for uh, being a friend, a new friend. And um Thanks for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Very good. Very good. All right. So without further ado, are you checked in on that on that Twitcher? Yeah. Cool. So uh, hit us up in the chat. Go to the Hope For Us Network. Um, find us on Instagram and TikTok and all of the things. Uh, we have a Discord that you can, if that's your thing. Um, absolutely be on this channel, tell your friends about it, spread the word, and stay tuned for uh, some pretty exciting announcements uh, uh, about a coin. Uh, I'm not going to say any more about that. But, um, I think if you if you keep off. tuned in, you'll see other uh, Meet the Team graphics popping off. Christina Bravo, what, what, making it look nice. And uh, yeah, so we're going to introduce the structure of our show. Since yeah, you so what, what can before, we expect today? What can we expect from the Tomorrow Show? Well, the Tomorrow Show is going to go like this. Um, today's episode in particular is going to give you a good idea. Top of show, we'll talk about current events, things going on. Uh, we'll do all live chatting. So, you know, if you have some things to say or uh, some topics you want us to touch on, um, you, can, you can shout those out. Um, we'll pick some. We'll pick some ahead of time. And we're going to call that the good, the bad, and the helpers. Because um, we don't want to really get into trash-ass news without reminding ourselves of Mr. Rogers. And uh, when it gets scary, look for the helpers, right? Yeah. it's imp And there are, I think we get so bogged down with, with the news and the things that are happening in the world that you start to, and, and a lot of it, especially these days, is, seems bad. It's bad, but uh, <laughs> bad news. But I think it's important to remember that we're, um, that there's lots and lots of people out there who are doing good stuff. For sure. When you carry that impending dread around all the time, uh, it feels like a big, nasty shit tail. I hate it. I'm feeling it. And you're not alone in that. Uh, but remember, you can look and find the helpers. You can take breaks from the news and social media, as hard as that can be. Yeah. Um, and uh, periodically, you know, we'll be uh, also, you know, calling out to our sentient robot, uh, the all-knowing network. Uh, we might say, hey, network, and <laughs> network will sound off in the chat. Um, network is very, very uh, large brain, large brain. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have the good, the bad, the ugly, and then we, we're going to do a segment called Searching for Goodness, which is uh, going to be about, we were going to, we were, Adventures. we were talking about like just having food, but we decided. Just searching for yum. Yeah, searching for first. yum, but then we were like, no, I think we need, we need all the goodness we can get. So it'll be adventures we go on or, uh, yeah, things that Some we reviews, find I really suppose. great. Yeah. The things we'll be reviewing will be um, us basically gushing about how amazing it is. Like <laughs> Probably. <that>. Um, <laughs> you know, recommendations, I guess, rather than reviews. And then um, we're going to be doing a recurrent segment that's called Theory in Beats. Mm -hmm. Today's going to be real special because we're going to use magic to travel 
in time and space teleportation, if you will, mm -hmm. to the beat lab um, over 1827, 1800 block. Um, we, we love our, our co-producer AC and that's going to be a fun experience today. In the future, you Get can to expect see his lab. Yeah. You can expect collaboration and improvisation and, uh, building music and also showing you the behind the scenes part of it. So, uh, to demystify, if you're like feeling like you can't do it yourself, you most absolutely can. And then we'll have our yeah. nature's amazing. And so are you segment, which will be all naturey. Oh yeah. I, I, I flopped it. I flopped it in my bed. Oh, it's all good. And then um, we're going to be also having a guest each show and we'll be having a nice time conversation over in the record corner with our guests. And uh, sometimes we're going to have some performances too. So you can look forward to that later in the show today. More generally, um, we're just going to always tell you at the top of the show what you're going to be expecting for today's show. And uh, the, the name of the stream will probably evolve as well so that you have a little more detail right there. Um, but we won't keep it. We'll keep it pretty succinct, okay? And we're going to have welcoming and intros because that's important. Um, we often realize that in this world, a warm greeting um, or just introducing yourself uh, to some people or just being kind and smiling, waving, whatever, nodding your head can have a major impact on a person's day. Uh, and that's I, I actually read an article that that was all about mask mandates um, around the world and if masking sure. works. And they found in Bangladesh, this was like in Bangladesh mostly, that they did this study, but they found that people being like, hey, hey, other other person in my village, cover your face, cover your face, helped the most. Yeah. And I think that that goes along with what you're saying, yeah. is that those like community reminders and nods and saying hello and those things like make the difference. Those are what make people feel connected. Yeah. And I think in a world where I love you has almost become commodified and like meaningless to some people, mm. there's these little silent, small, I love yous to your community like, that are, Hey, I'm going to, that's not my trash, but I'm going to pick that shit up. Yeah. Or, I'm just going to like be like, oh, that dog is so cute. And that person is going to feel happy that their dog is cute. Um, don't worry about being corny and shit. We need a little bit of positivity in the world. So if you can state positivity, uh, try to. And uh, I think that that's really what this show is going to try and set the tone of at the top. Um, and then most importantly, we are going to try and not overlook that in the months and years to come of this program. We want you to feel at home here. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gabby. <laughs> For the win, Gabby. So should we should we go on to our first Yeah, segment? welcome home. Let's go on to our first segment. Um, before uh, we go there, um, I want to I want to remind y'all to keep it cozy. We want to remind the community at the top of each show to simply be kind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a live stream, right? So all are welcome. Um, and we want to be here together. Let's take care of one another. And yeah. Be good to your community, with your Twitch community. Yeah. Uh, let's counteract all that negativity. 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 By putting some pluses in the bucket, just being kind. So um, let's... Let's go ahead. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're going to talk about some current events real quick, and this is the good, the bad, <laughs> and the helpers. Da, 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 da. All right. So we picked some topics this week. Yeah. Let me get my big marker. I'll run them down. Okay. <laughs> Where are you going in there? Let me get my big marker. Okay. Why don't you tell them the topic? Okay, so. We have, we have like, I think most people want the bad news first, right? If you say, do you want the good ask, news or the bad news? Ask him, ask him. Okay. So do you want the good news or the bad news in the chat? The good news first or the bad news first? Let's see. 
Who do you want first? The good news? You want the bad news? So we have. We're. Yeah. Oh, good news. Okay, we'll, we'll go with some good news. First. Okay. Hit cool. them with the good news. The good news is that. Uh, are you going to write it? Yeah. Okay. So. Right. <laughs> Governor Pritzker of Illinois, which is the state that we're in, but. He signed the the first bill um, that will make mental health first responders, right? So can you go into that a little more? What does that mean? Hold on. It's the first one in the whole in the whole country, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a pretty good advocate. Hold that up. <laughs> he's a pretty good hold, advocate hold for it mental tight. health. Get it tight in there. Sharpie, you should sponsor us. Give me a big fat marker. For okay, so what does this mean? Pritzker. Okay, you can you can pull it back. I'm messing with our lighting. They work so hard, Lena. Hard, hard on. Go on. Hardly. So Pritzker, uh, you know, call him what you will, uh, a billionaire or uh, you know, uh, politician or whatever, whatever your uh, opinions are on that. The dude is putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak, and uh, going out on a limb. First responder mental health bill means that 911 was going to have to uh, coordinate with mental health professionals responding to mental health calls. Wow, that makes sense, right? Yeah, but but previously we've had you know just lots of situations where people call yeah call 911 for a mental health crisis and they're. It very, you know, they're in danger. So it's really important to get those first responders out there who know how to de-escalate a situation and, and you know, deal with this crisis in a way that's appropriate, <laughs> frankly. So, For sure. yeah. So, um, yeah. So the, he, the, the fact that the governor is uh, prioritizing that is wonderful it's a, a a huge first step in doing that stuff and if so you want, if you want to read more about the bill yeah network has just done the honor of putting a link popping a link there the yeah. wgn story about it uh shout out wgn so that's that's some good news yeah that's some real good that's a first step. state yeah first in some some you know halloween costume this year could be the state of illinois First, people go. What? What do you? What are you dressed up as? Oh, hey, I'm gonna start a conversation about myself now. Hey, but first responders for real. Uh, thanks for all you do. Um, taking care of people in emergency, life-threatening situations, uh, and often doing so with a, a lot of compassion. So we know to look for the helpers out there, right? And and then uh, okay, so we got some bad news. <laughs> we have a lot of bad news in the world, but uh, I hate to laugh. I know. Uh, but, I know. Uh, it keeps well, me from crying sometimes. right. You have to. All right. So, so what's next? Uh, so we have a lot of bad weather events. Ooh. There were some crazy videos of the um, the flooding in like Pennsylvania and New York, and there are really, really bad wildfires in the West uh, that are just, just devastating and uh my dad was telling me that the uh one of the fires up, i know it's a bad fire drawing one like, of the fires up north in northern northern california is as big as eight rhode islands or f or f. three los angeleses sucks which made sense to us like you can you kind of understand three Los Angeleses, I think. So that it's been really, really bad. And those have caused some of the worst air in the world for some places. So I know that Seattle and Portland had some really, really bad air. Um, that's rough. Yeah. So that's, that's bad news. Um, Success. There, the helpers in that are, you know, countless thousands of of uh firefighters there's like other mm -hmm. states that even send their firefighters out west it's to help like a perfect connection with first responders 
That's true. Because uh, the the relief people, the people that volunteer, the people that drop everything to go fight fires, these the most powerful force in nature next to water. You know, I know. Um, and you can't you can't summon the ocean to fight it. You gotta. I know. I always feel like I want to send the rain over there. But anyway. You, you could do a, a cast, a spell, right? I wish I could. That would be awesome. Uh, so then our uh, next bad news part is the anti-trans legislation in Texas and other states, um, which it just keeps getting, like, repeated, like, pulled back into, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. like, they'll be like, oh, it's off the bill. We got it off the bill. And then they'll put it in another bill. And Slipping it in. And it's uh, it just and that doesn't even account for the fact that over the last week the abortion ban. I know. So, what you gotta think about there is so yeah, sorry the helpers for sure. Yeah, so that's the thing is like I have an acquaintance who, uh, was at the Capitol building in Austin, Texas, all night because he wanted to like read his. Um, I can't think of the words that I'm, this is why I'll take notes next time and we'll have some like real set out, set out news brief ish stuff. But, um, so he went to the Capitol in Austin to read like his statement to, you know, the, the people who keep bringing the bill up there. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, stayed all night. He was like posting his stories about, you know, oh, it's 3.30 in the morning, it's 4.30 in the morning. And they were all there all night long, mm. fighting it out, talking it out. So that's huge. You know, those people are, it's part, it's their life, but it's also, you know, they're fighting for those trans kids. They're fighting for those, those people that, that they're fighting. need their voices. Yeah. They're fighting. Uh, they're getting into that good trouble. Um, yeah. They are trying to fight for equity for all. Yeah. And if you're not down with that, ask yourself, why are you not down for that? <laughs> you got to ask yourself. It, it really, yeah, it really is like that simple. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So those are some, some helpers out there. Just, it, yeah. They're, they're the good, there. the bad, and the helpers. Why do we talk about the bad at all in this program? Well, come on, people. If you don't talk about the bad stuff, we have no outlet. And everybody keeps that yucky, bad stuff in. And the yeah. feelings that it creates for you, those stay in too. So when things are happening, on the housewarming party, we talked about Simone Biles on Lil Wayne, and Afghanistan, and People have served or are currently serving. How those all intersect on um, what was a prototype of the good, the bad, and the helpers. But we got to think about all of the things that are constantly flying at us. Saw a, a good graphic recently uh, as I was scrolling the internet. Uh, stuck in the scroll, but I saw a very helpful graphic because that's the thing. Technology can be wasteful and can breed laziness and can breed listlessness and zombie death stare, right? But it can also help you. And if you're more deliberate about how you use it, um, I think that that should be part of the health conversation too. Yeah. Internet came out of nowhere uh, and was everything. And we never stopped to take a pause and talk about what's healthy as far as using, using the internet, all of us, all the time. Uh, that's one way to think about it. But ultimately, when I think about the fact that I saw this graphic and it helped me to think about before the internet, I got three pieces of bad news in any given day that were fairly personal and close to me, but like three pieces. And now each day as I constantly stay juiced on my internet scroll 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 i need it i need it i need to have i need to know i need to know everything i need to have the information as i do that i'm bombarded with bad information 
bad news. Thousands of bits of bad news each day. So that's just like a reminder to me. Hey, if I'm going to pick up this device, this amazing all-knowing device, maybe I should have like a an idea of what I'm going to do before I get on there. And maybe my idea is I'm going to go scroll my face off. I'm going to go zone out for an hour and scroll Instagram. Okay. Maybe I set a timer, though. Maybe I need to listen to my own advice and heed that advice so that I can uh, uh, be healthier with my use of it. So um, with that, do you have anything else to add about the good, the bad, and the helpers? Not right now. Chat, yeah. community, please let us know if there's uh, something that you want to uh, hear us talk about or you want us to chime in about in future episodes. You can send messages um, to mikevanopel at gmail.com. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll try and include those. Okay. So without further ado, we have our first, what will be recurrent segment. Yeah. What's it called? Searching for goodness. We're going to try something special too. We're going to, this is our first time doing this. Yeah. So be gentle, yeah. but we're going to try a little hybrid video slash live commentary because network is great. Network is powerful. Ooh, oh, that's not the one. Mm -hmm. no. Oh no, that's not. That's a. That's the nature. That's the nature segment. We need that searching for goodness. There we go. I hear it. Are you seeing a freezy? Yeah. I'm seeing a little freezy. Working the kinks out. Here it goes. It went super yeah. fast. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, oh, <laughs> so we were at the, this was when we were at the Renaissance Fair. There's a, a couple sign. of weeks ago. So it's the last day of Renaissance Fair, by the way. It's yeah, a timely so piece. Today, this weekend. They put in hobbit holes. Oh man, that's so good. I got on that pirate ship. I had a very pirate look. Today. Yeah, so Mike had a little piratey look, and I had a witchy look. You don't have to dress up, but oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Like third time. Second time. No, it's cool. I think second. It's a little village in Bristol, Wisconsin, basically an imaginary village, basically. But the the vendors and the commerce is very real. <laughs> Performances are pretty fun too, if that's your thing. There's jousting. Really all sorts of stuff. What's that thing you got on your on your waist, that style piece you got? It's it was like a it's like a corset belt. Corset belt. I didn't get a full on corset. So Renaissance fairs are kinda like a way to time travel. Time travel back yes. to the Renaissance period. Um, the there was like a school teacher in the you got 50s. A warp, the time warp, right? Yeah, I don't know if that's just on hey. our end or not, but. yeah, it's like a time traveling experience where you uh you you get to like kind of suspend your animation, yeah, your, your animation, suspend your animation, suspend your imagination, or your uh, your kind of like. Just use your imagination to enjoy. Looks like looks like we got stuck on that frame of a transition of sorts. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So I'll tell you a little bit about them. So yeah, tell us a little bit so about Runfair. In like the fifties or sixties. No problem, network. Thank you so much, network. People, people You're an amazing were network. Yeah, really. So people, tell me about it. So people were like really into kind of like that style of music, you know, there were like some books coming out that were more fantastical, like, like, I, I don't know, like that, that there was a Renaissance little sample, style. There was a little sample of music, maybe Network will work it out and he'll be able to pull up the, yeah. the end of it. They, sorry. Network. It's like a, it's like folk musicians were kind of using yeah, it's like Baroque music or something Using, like, like that. Using like Renaissance or Baroque music or like other. There was this like pipe thing. It was it was it was like pipes, not bagpipes, where he was like blowing into it necessarily, but he was kind of he had like a oh there, there we go. 
Yeah, network. Network, you're the best. Oh, yeah, so they were really that's down. That's serious hey. top three. And that, that's our homie, Britt. Britt rules. Love you, Britt. So this is Bristol. It's really pretty. It's a super beautiful uh, grounds. Yeah, huge. They have a huge amount of property that they have this Renaissance the fair joust. on. This is the a joust. jousting kind of area, and I loved how the kids were jumping up on the back, just like the old olden days. For sure. And they have it. You know, they have kind of these plays where they have the royals come to the jousting. And yeah. they'll yeah, pick nice. a side and they'll look at the knights. Yeah, the they'll knights. get all dressed up. Oh, you remember this guy? I know it's coming. Yeah, this guy was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Gargoyle. So Living Gargoyle. So all of this is Chess like, players. yeah. Oh man, There's... you could go buy a sword if you want. <laughs> yeah. Whatever makes you happy. This amazing chalk artist. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Look at that dragon. The dragoon. Here we go. This is the music you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, that was so awesome. Amazing. It's, yeah, I guess it's still a bagpipe, but he's just not blowing it. He's using his arm to make the air. Yeah, maybe I just don't know much about bagpipes. Yes. I think you can do both things. Thank you, thank you, Network. Yeah. Thank you for running our first hybrid video. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about it. Of so, course, of course. So, they... People were like getting back into kind of using folk music and getting back into using those kind of instruments. And um, so they, yeah, so in, in like the 50s going into the 60s, people were really into that kind of time travel, you know, using those things to, they were just into it. So, <laughs> like, my mom was really into Tolkien. So, anyway. It's like Jules Verne in Back to the Future, part two and three, or three. But sorry. not the same ran, time. Ran, random. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Random reference. So, so, they, yeah. So, they started kind of making little Renaissance fairs where they would dress up and time travel. Um I think a lot of teachers used it to teach their kids about teach their kids about like different that time, time period. periods. So when was the Renaissance? So it was in the fourteen to sixteen hundreds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So this so Wikipedia says that like a LA school teacher in nineteen sixty three had one that started started growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, there's reenactments, there's lots of people in costumes, there's uh, shops that you can buy swords at where people are actually doing metal smithing. And there's this is super cool, like really cool, old um, skilled hands. Yeah, or like you know, people making flower crowns, people who make Mirsham pipes. Yeah, Mirsham pipes. Uh, up there was like a whole pipe, corsets, a dresses, whole pipe score, yeah, capes, yeah, uh, little pantaloons, cups, jewelry. Mm -hmm. Did you get some jewelry? I did get some jewelry. What kind of jewelry did you get? Well, I was so I'm Sc of Scottish descent. Uh, we Scottish. we have a clan. Uh, my family has a clan, and so I was looking for the Scottish thistle, which I had seen at other run fairs Fun that I had been by. to. Um. The Scottish thistle is just like the thistle is one of the. It's like the national flower of Scotland, and it it's a huge. Um, it's beautiful, and, and it was them. all over the fest. Yeah, so I thistles. found some stuff finally, which isn't isn't usually easy to find, but there it is. So I knew I well, found what thistle, I needed. There was actually thistle growing naturally on the grounds too, or maybe they planted it. I yeah. don't know, but yeah, really cool because we adorned your hat with some some found. 
found objects. Yes. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and you eat. There's pickles, pickle stands. There's sausages. There's uh, what else was there? Lots of oh, beers lots of and lots drinks. Of big and, turkey legs. And yeah, the, big turkey legs. And, they, and some of it's funny. They're like, oh, it's a dragon leg or you know, armadillo egg or something like that. They're yeah. just there's some silly stuff. Their drinks are kind of like themed and stuff and it's just it's a good way to uh just get out of the city if you're someone who lives in the city uh if you're someone in the midwest so you must go on an adventure and it runs from memorial day all the way to labor day on the weekend yeah you can get discount tickets pro tip yep at menards at menards and uh yeah. why is that important they have it well they, so they have them all over the world and i think that a lot, another thing that we didn't focus so much on in our video, but we saw a lot of was, I think a lot of people who feel like they don't fit in, in like normal everyday society sure. can feel like they fit in at a Renaissance fair. Definitely. Like so this. that, that's why I think I got into them when I was in high school, I was in, I was really into Shakespeare and I was in theater and drama in high school, but the Ren Fair just like is full of kind of a bunch of cool weirdos who dress up and they, you know, make make it all fun. And for sure. there were a lot of people there too. Like some people will dress up as like a Trekkie, right? That like from Star Trek and then time travel back to the Renaissance. So that's you know meta, there's, that's meta nerd. Yeah, there's like people Love it. there's people Love meta nerds. who just have, you know, it makes them feel like they're they belong somewhere and that they can go somewhere and kind of lose themselves and have some fun so it's pretty neat and yeah. I, I think it's not really about the time period necessarily it's just about uh finding a place that you feel like you belong to something bigger and you know that there's other people that like like being kind of silly and uh fantastical and um you know because it's not all silly some people take it seriously you know but uh it's a good way to let your hair down, so to speak. And I dressed up for the first time. Last time, I didn't really have anything. She bought me special pants this time. They were like scallywag pants, I think that was what they were called. They looked like yeah. pirate or bandana. <laughs> it was cool. Uh, and, They're like pantaloons. But what, I, what I'm getting at there is I shook it up. I shook it up for myself a little bit. I tried something different that I wouldn't have ever done necessarily. Um, and she encouraged me, uh, they bought me pants. They, <laughs> they, uh, organized the, the camping trip, uh, so we can also spend some time in nature. Um, and just thanks for that trip. And thanks for showing me, uh, the joys of Ren Fair and how self-expression of that, uh, that nature can be so freeing and stuff like that. So, um, yeah if you've never been check it out and if you're not in the midwest check there out there are something like it there are ones all over the world in every state probably even little ones we had a tiny would, one would you say larping is kind of like a, a ren fair adjacent yeah thing? does anybody know what larping is out there probably <laughs> um well i didn't really know what larping was but yeah. that's another thing it's like if you if that's something you want to do don't let somebody talk you out of it because they think it's stupid or they think it's silly. Tell them it makes me happy. So I don't really care what you think. Yeah. Boom. You know, drop the mic, all that. So I don't know. You, we want to keep it rolling. Yeah. You want to keep this show rolling? Cause I think that covers it about the Ren Fair and its intersectionality with transforming community mental health, reminding ourselves that, Hey, rent fair is mental health. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, you know, check it out sometime if that that is something that might float your boat. It's a good, it's good stuff. It's a good time. That was goodness. That was our first searching for goodness. Good job. That work? I know you don't have hands. You're a robot. <laughs> well, high five. Thanks, that work for running that segment. And we're gonna keep moving on. Um, nature nature what about nature it's amazing it is nature is amazing so are you so are you so are you so are you 
Um, this again is going to uh, require the assistance of the all-knowing network. Uh, network's going to roll uh, a little footage from our special garden. You're going to talk about uh, some na some cool ass nature stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And you get to see our garden, so that's pretty beautiful. It's very sunny out today, pretty warm, and uh, you know we would be uh, taking you out there ourselves. But this just gives us a opportunity to be a little more dynamic and get up in the flowers, get up in the nature. Um, so network when you're ready. Uh, we like to introduce our garden gnome. There he is. And uh, what are we looking at here? Nature is amazing, and so are you. <laughs> All right, so this is so our, these are some yeah. zinnias. Zinnias. And what? they look at those. They're like flowers on flowers. What the? How does it? What is it? <laughs> Whoa, look at that bud. Yeah, so that's a bud that's going to pop. So that bud blows up into that? Yeah. And there's all these different colors. Oh, that's amazing. Look at that one. That one's like halfway blown up. Like just give it a day or something. Yeah. Wow. And oh, I love those yellow. Those yellowy ones are kind of, we don't get that many of those. And they continue to just keep growing more little tiny baby flowers inside on top of the flower? Kind of, yeah. What? How does it do that? Because <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> okay. I, how did how did you get here? So there is that another bee? There's oh, another little, little fuzzy bee. butt bee. I think that's a carpenter bee. You can tell because it has that like dot. I think we see it again. Yeah. So it kind of has like it's it's whole like it's it's abdomen and it's kind of shoulders aren't all yellow. It has like that kind of spot in the middle of the yellow you see that i see that spot yeah right there so i yeah. think that's a carpenter rather than like a bump a big bumblebee a bumblebee will be like all yellow was the bumblebee on the sunflower at the beginning or I was that like also that a was also maybe a carpenter bee but well yeah okay that was but they both are amazing pollinators that was beautiful so we got how did you grow those? So it, I I feel like it was just like luck, honestly, because yeah. we got these, I got this big bag of seeds from Home Depot that was just wildflower seeds. And I put them like in little parts of the yard. And I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> and it took them like a little while, but then they started popping up in our flat, in our beds. And they're just, I think zinnias are just um, really like uh, resilient. And I think they just keep, keep sprouting off. So uh, really cool. Yeah. So we also had Cosmos. We also had Gandalf's being silly over there. He's again. licking the light. It's okay. okay. So <laughs> he's, he's fine. So Cosmos, yeah, we those, have Cosmos. Those sound like, uh, is that Sex in the City Cosmos? No, uh, they're a, a <laughs> another flower. <laughs> so bad uh, joke. All right, uh, can I ask you about bees for a second? Sure. Used to be soups scared. Soups, soups, dupes yeah. scared of bees. Uh, snakes why, as well. And why? Uh, why were you afraid of bees? I think it's kind of a generally pervasive notion in our society that like bees and snakes and shit are generally scary or like parts of nature are generally scary and you should be afraid of them. Yeah. Um, they're going to sting you. They're going to bite you. They're going to, you know, terrorize you. So what I am uh, getting at is that I, I was very close to that bee on the sunflower taking that, taking that little clip. 
you know, spoiler alert. And I think that I'm not as afraid of being close to things in nature like that. Snakes, bees, because of people like you. Yeah. Specifically you. Specifically uh, Simon Parrish, who is a, a biologist, a friend of mine that I think he lives in upstate New York or something now. But um, you both took the time, and I think this is because how, how your parents raised you and said, hey, this is a thing of nature. Check this out. It's cool, actually. Don't be scared. Yeah, they I just didn't have did, that. I yeah. had I had got stung by bees. Ouch. Bees are scary. Ouch. Nobody telling me, hey, bees are beautiful, amazing. So yeah, creatures so I think my without, my know. mom my parents like didn't react to them. And I think that that has like a big a big part of it. I think that's a big part of it. Like they would see a spider. Like my dad wouldn't let us kill spiders because he said it was bad luck. Okay. <laughs> so we would have to, we, we had, Jimmy. we lived in like a big old house with lots of house spiders and we would just catch them and release them outside. And, you know, he just didn't react. He'd just be like, oh, okay, let's grab her, put her outside. And my mom, you know, was the same way about bees. So like, they just didn't react in like a big, a big kind of dramatic way, if you will. So I think that that like is kind of why. And I think, a, you know, a big part of bees is if you don't bother them, they really leave you alone. Well, and. Because we're not talking about wasps. Yeah. Wasps it's, are yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely insects, but. a myriad of insect species. And the bumblebees, the carpenter bees, the ones that are helpful, pollinators, and also don't attack you aggressively, you know, I just really want to stick their faces and their butts and some and some pollen they just want to get up in that flower put the, smush it around on their little bug face and right little, little feet and and they put it on their feet and their little pollen pouches yeah and they, they have pollen pouches on their legs and stuff yeah and they're just they're basically the most amazing little tiny organ like they're not a tiny organism they're not microscopic or anything but they are a small bug by all you know comparisons and if you think about things i look at my dog and my cat sometimes i'm like you're so tiny your bone is so small or your little you know all the little details in nature are really so mind-blowing as our cat uh <laughs> you okay i think he's okay i won't i won't he's, he's walking it off um he didn't knock over anything major, but all those tiny, tiny details, uh, down to the little, you know, patterns in their fur or how their fur is different. And, um, you know, and then it comes down to the fact that you talk about a bee, even tinier scale, and they got little head and little legs and, you know, little yeah. parts. Yeah. That's mind blowing. Yeah. It's amazing. Nature is amazing. And without them, would we have food? So there's a lot of food we would not have. It's a lot of food we would not have without the humble like, bumble. The humble bumble. Bee. Like we would have zero almonds. Oh, darn it. Like all no, so almonds. So no almond milk? No almonds. No almonds. No almond all. cake? Nope. <laughs> no, no chicken almond bean? No almond... No almond, uh, almond peanuts, peanut or I mean M &M? M &M? almond almond M and M's, almond M and M's. No. Anything besides <laughs> almonds, we wouldn't have. Anything that like flowers, right? We wouldn't have peppers, right? Because the flower wouldn't. Well, there's certain things that other pollinators pollinate. Okay. Like we could look it up. I guess flies probably pollinate stuff too. And like, we have flies in our garden all the time, yeah. wiggling their little butts. Do around. ants pollinate? Ants pollinate a little bit. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, how about that? Maybe we'll have to do a segment a pollinator. on pollinators. So I actually want to go back to the, the types of flowers we have. Other sure, than sure. Is. Sure, sure. So how about that sunflower that we saw at the beginning that sunflower at the beginning where is that sunflower in our yard can you explain it i don't know how that thing so came 
so beautiful and large because so it is under our deck blah, 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 under like underneath the, you the stairs you. like the stairs come down it's our like, deck it's like way. and then it's hey what's up <laughs> it's like under the stairs and it's like has this creepy crawly thing happening yeah, and like, we don't know where it came from because we didn't plant it so i don't know if it just blew over from another yard what do you think it's kind of like this yeah so it's a crude rendering where <laughs> it seemed to grow from the other side of the yard somehow and it has no this big, it, i wouldn't this say this wibbly that. anaconda kind of spine to it that then comes up <laughs> and and it blasted off into like three yeah there's beautiful sunflowers with this little like the brown ish ring on the inside that rather than just your standard yellow yeah you don't like my crude rendering so i wouldn't say it comes from another part of the yard but it it did pop up out of the gravel kind of out of nowhere randomly and yeah a little shop of horror vibes it was just very totally cool so we have that which is very enjoyable and the zinnias and then what other pollinator plants did we plant this year do you remember so you you in we order some, to get some natives right? yeah we did some natives so that we could get some more butterflies it's like come here come because, here oh butterflies pollinate too huh? yeah butterflies are huge you want some more coffee so we sure so yeah so we have echinacea we have milkweed we got some um uh fox gloves um and they were all just gorgeous and so those yeah those have helped bring in the um the butterflies and the moths and all of that those gorgeous creatures so other than the bees so yeah um one of the things that I suggest doing, I like to go on little nature, little walks around the neighborhood. And if you can't find, um, if you don't know what a flower is, take a picture. Oh, yeah. And then there's lots of apps that you can just put them into. You can even do it in Google. So I didn't even With know. Yeah, you can even do it in Google. Google. The Google Lens feature, like but it's in the google app it's in the google app yeah you just so you go to the search part yeah you go to the search part on google and there's a camera button and you you hit that and you can search for what it is but you that tried one, out a bunch of different stuff yeah they weren't all accurate, so right? that one doesn't it, it sometimes it's the best one sometimes there's other ones there's a cool one called seek which Works, and you feel fun. works with um a naturalist it's it works with iNaturalist which is a website you can go to but seek will ask naturalists what kind of frog this is what kind of bird this is wow. what kind of plant this is so they also like take the data from that and give it back to the naturalists to kind of be able to map out where plants are growing, where, you know, invasive species might be, where you've seen these frogs or whatever. Gandalf is behind our computer here and I feel like he's gonna jump on he's it. Scared. He's scared. <laughs> he's fine now. Um, so yeah, so that's like a really great, a really great thing you can do so um one of the ones i really like is planta and that one is really accurate so yeah go on like a little nature walk and take a picture of some of the flowers you don't know and you'll learn about them and it's really cool and it'll tell you it'll even link you to other other things so you can put in nature apps or plant apps um in your in your app search and find out a bunch of different ones that are really cool um I, that's what i did when we were growing these wildflower seeds we didn't even know what they were we were like what's that one what's that one um you know and it'll say like oh it's in the daisy family it's kind of neat 
So, that's, so when you're having a shit day, going in your garden, would you say that that's like one of your top top ten coping skills or? Yeah. Like, like what about that experience helps? Uh, it just he he's knocking stuff off again. He sure is. That was a rock. That was very kitty of you. So, what? Sorry, what your question was? Does that help me? Why does it help me? Yeah. Um, I what think kind of, it really it takes support? me. I think it really like takes takes me out of my head, and I'm able to like focus on nature. These other things, yeah. Not are not only are they gorgeous and beautiful, but they're interesting. Some a lot of the stuff I like about gardening does have to do with me taking care of them and. You know, you'll be like, oh, look at these little things, these little, these little dead leaves that I need to clip off and help it, help it grow. Yeah. Look it's at, wasted energy. Yeah. I'm going to make this thing more efficient. Yeah. So um, on other segments of Nature is Amazing and So Are You, we'll be doing some different tutorials. It'll get a lot more interactive. We'll show you things more uh, interactively. So Oh, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Can I be your helper? Absolutely. Can AC ask a bunch of questions too? Yeah. I like when AC asks questions about gardening. Yeah. Do you want to tell a story about midnight gardening? <laughs> so sometimes it's really, really hot here during the day and it's really humid or one of us is doing something. And so we end up going out and kind of doing gardening kind of late. It was like 10, 10 30. <laughs> dark out but we have our porch light on and we were so mike and i were like what we were planting herbs that was like the beginning of the gardening season and um we had just gotten a bunch of stuff yeah we just gotten all these herbs and we really needed to get them into the soil so we were like let's do it now so we started doing that and then ac came over because he lives really close to us and was like, what, what's happening? <laughs> he thought it was so funny. Yeah. He was laughing and asking questions and learning and yeah, it's fun. We, yeah. And uh, maybe we'll have a, a late night gardening segment at some point. If that's something you want to see, uh, subscribe, follow us on Twitch, shout us out, DM us on socials. If you have any kind of, any kind of stuff that you're interested in seeing on the nature's amazing segment, please send them to us and let us know. So we can do, we can do little field trips. We can do tutorials. We can do DIY. We can yeah. do, uh, yeah, how, yeah, you know, yeah. do, we can do plant stuff, animal stuff, insect stuff. Uh, really like anything goes anything I mean, in nature that you that think, we of. Don't think of yeah so yeah. let us know your ideas yeah we could go hobie hunting which is also mushroom mushroom hunting. hobie hobie like h-o-b-i-e yeah that's what i heard something called i've never that. heard him called that before uh like bohemians mushrooms are wild mushrooms are really nuts yeah they would be an excellent amazing and so are you uh, we fodder. should get we should get a mushroom hunter to show us how to mushroom hunt. That'd be cool. Yeah, uh, interviewing people, visiting people. I think at some point um, it goes without saying that we might be able to coax Gracie. <laughs> oh my! You know what that means? I think that means that Myron's here. Uh, sorry for the dog. Hey, baby, hey, hey, come on in. for a second. Yeah, so if you have any ideas for for that, yeah. then join our Discord community too, and we can keep talking on there. Yeah, uh, and in a little while, we're going to be having an interview with our guest that just arrived, and uh, my apologies for the dog barking. Yeah, it's she's just Minnie. Sweet. That's how she talks. You don't like her voice. My bad. Uh, 
Myron is a very, very amazing muralist. Uh, he is also a pharmacist. He is also a musician, and we'll talk a little bit about all of that um, in just a little bit. But we're going to get into our next uh, debut of our third recurrent segment. So, so far you have Searching for Goodness. That's what you can look forward to seeing on our show. And you're going to be able to look forward to seeing another segment of Nature's Amazing and So Are You with Aaron Dunbar. And this is a, a pretty special one. We're going to magically teleport uh, to AC's Beat Lab. But do, do you have the, the spell ready, you witch? <laughs> you have to help me. Okay, okay. Yeah. And network, we might need help from you as well. Um, reminder to uh, get involved in the conversation on Discord, Twitch, socials, um, and help us gather that magical strength um, from this amazing digital community um, so we can keep doing this um, for a long, long time, spreading that hope. Um, all right. So all right. network, help us charge up enough magic to teleport <laughs> to AC's Beat Lab. Can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah. Nothing's corny. Nothing's ever corny. This is one. That's one. Aaron, that's one, okay? Theory and beats. Okay. sure that I didn't have the levels too high otherwise the track and the music would have been distorted yeah you don't want it blown up and it wouldn't have sounded good so I just wanted to make sure that was good so he, he's taking the beat that you chose ultimately beat number three and we're going to build from that that's going to be the the foundation of the building that's going to be our theme song for the tomorrow show not bad eh Aaron not bad. Not bad. And then I'll make something up uh, with the sear guitar. I tuned it up. That's very important. You got to tune your instruments. So yeah, he's got a pretty nice setup here in his lab. All right. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that everybody should know. When you're doing this, you should at least make sure that what you're trying to play is not muted, or else it won't record. How silly. We all make mistakes, baby. Right? Let's try this again. Oh, yeah. I see a beat. I see the beat. So we can't hear it right now, but this is tracking and all of this is recording. So we're gonna record this drum beat to a track. 
we're going to keep it, and then we're going to build our song from that. Mm. Mike can play guitar. We can add some tambourine samples, yeah. some organs. Go cool nuts. We can, get... we can add some, some turntable scratches. We can add some, some lovely vocal stylings from Aaron Dunbar. Yeah. Vocal stylings. So, yeah. All right. That'll probably be enough. Right? Should be enough. Let's count in bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can look One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Beats in time, that's about a minute. I think that's good. Yeah. Jingle. Jingle mm -hmm. length, right? That's the other thing. We're going for jingle length. Going for jingle length. So Aaron, since there's only A, B, C, D, E, F, G on air, pick a letter A through G. G. Right, G, okay. Now major, it's like a little happy sounding, minor's a little sadder sounding. Pick major or minor. I'm going major. All right, so we're gonna go G major for the tomorrow show theme. As our, our DJ man breaks it down, AC. I like all that reverb. Yeah, that's nice. It's like you put it in a trash can or in a gymnasium. That's so sick. Yeah, that's just turning up the reverb. Make what they call it. It's real wet. Just crank that reverb. All right, so we'll try something. In, uh, so start that beat over, and I'll try something in G major. Just, I'll try and mix something up. Ooh, I like that beginning. It's so un unexpected. G's like the third fret on your E string. Script's good. Does that sound major enough, or do you want it to be a little higher sounding? I think the first. I think the first one was going with the beat. All right, and, and then we know what we, the words are the tomorrow show. <laughs> yeah. Show tomorrow. Show two of the Aaron. Okay. Tomorrow show. 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 Mike's gonna be like, why are the vocals all me? Yeah, don't leave me hanging. You're not gonna leave me hanging, are you? I'll I'll take the lead here, but. All right, you ready to party? Yeah. All right. Here you go. I'm gonna go one of your off. I'm going to do Mariah Carey. <laughs> I can't hear my snare. Ah. All right. 
Ready? Rolling. Yeah. The tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Tomorrow Tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Tomorrow show. Oh yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So you got that? You got that singing? You got to sing that line, right? Uh huh. You gonna do that? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's terrible. <laughs> Try some things sometimes. Sometimes you gotta, you know, sometimes you hear something and you're like, we should go with that. Let's do it. And that's what just happened right here. This is uh this is this is how records are made. So many things happen just on the fly. All right, hold on. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. I can't wait. Okay. It might sound really bad. I know it's gonna sound awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's. I like the DVD. That's the track right there. Yeah. That's it. You put a little, uh, little distortion on the DDDs. On the what? The DDDs. The DDDs. DDDDDDDDDD. I guess they're not DDDs, but okay. They kind of are. <laughs> Man, you save so much more time with the keyboard shortcuts. I don't like me. shortcuts. <laughs> That's what I always say to him, too. I'm like Whitney. Let me be me. <laughs> All right, what do you want to put in this? On the, on the DVDs? Yeah. Uh, just uh, go to voice. And, then, and, then, yeah. and go to <laughs> buzz. You want buzz? Yeah, I want to hear what that sounds like. The laugh it sounds like a trumpet. But I went, ha, ha, ha. Dude, I might end up keeping that little thing for one of my songs. Oh, that's fine, man. The Tomorrow Show theme song is yours to do with what you choose. I bet you could write some fire bars to the Tomorrow Show. Awesome. You hear yourself? Mm -hmm. I do. I hear myself. I'm going to turn the music down just a little bit so it doesn't bleed over, but you should still be able to hear it. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Okay. And we're going to go. Here we go. The Tomorrow Show. Nailed it. it. One take, dude. One take, Aaron. One take, <laughs> one take Aaron. MC Aaron D. 
guarantee you one take in the house. <laughs> Putting all these money. suckers on notice. Woo! A little more. A little yeah. scoochies. A little scoochies. Good. It's mostly Ooh. scoochies. When you're sampling or resampling something you like. We made ourselves a theme song uh, this weekend. And, and, Theory uh, and Beats. Theory and Beats. And we got it done before my neighbors were like, yo. Hmm. Well, <laughs> if you look at the time, if we were timing this, Ooh, we call. met we met the 30-minute challenge. I think we did meet the 30-minute challenge. So right That's on. That's gangster. Right on. Man. So now you just save it and you... You... Yeah, you just bounce it down. Garage man couldn't make it easier. So if you're somebody that wants to make some theme songs of your own, some jingles, some heartfelt romantic love songs, some anthemic battle cry tunes, you can, do, you it. You can do it. Um, <laughs> there's loops on there. There's you could always play some pots and pans if you don't have drums. You, uh, yeah, you can make sounds with your mouth. As we dee 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 dee, right? So, um, I want to see what that sounds like. Oh, it's, it's, not good. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm into that. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to bounce this track and send it to you. Thanks, man. And the beauty of that is that we started with nothing, and now something exists in the world. Because uh, you sparked it with a little beat, right? Yup, yup. Um, so, yeah, yeah, just get after it. Um, you can just start with one thing and then add a thing, and then you keep adding to it, and and then that encourages your friends to get more bold, like Aaron D here, <laughs> with the finishing touch, the cherry on top. MC Aaron D. MC Aaron D. My, <laughs> my bad. So, um, but I hope you look forward to more. Yeah. Theory and Beats. More Theory and Beats. With AC. Mike B. I'm AC and that's Mike D. <laughs> yeah, I'm Mike D for this. Mike D. <laughs> yes. And that's how you make. Give her one. Give her one. Yeah. That was weak. Do it again. One more. <laughs> theory and Beats. <laughs>
Are you on Bandcamp or anything? If they want to like support you directly, you should pop that track up on Bandcamp. Really? Yeah, then they you yeah. know they can just give that money directly to you. On Fridays, Bandcamp sometimes waves the fee, Ooh, so okay. you get all that you get all that sweet sweet ninety nine cent. It's <laughs> all of us. Well, yeah, I mean you could wow. you could you could charge, I suppose a dollar ninety nine for every boy. It's that good. Yeah, people could donate what they want. Yeah, yeah, they got that platform is pretty neat for supporting independent artists of all all genres. So, um, and I, you know, if if you really want to uh, support this guy, get him on the Instagram and all that, so you know what new art projects, what new music projects. Um, plus, I gotta say, your stories, man. Like, I'm not a guy that watches stories a lot, but when I do, and I get a modern story. They tickled me, man. You just like put a lot of good vibes out in the world. Oh, thank you. The Lover Boy videos that you were doing. Can you talk about that a little bit with the flowers? <laughs> oh yeah, I was. Uh, I was like, I'm a no-name artist, like in the music industry. So I'm like, I need to find ways to put my music out in the world. And I figure I'll just make a viral video and hope it go, a video and hope it goes viral. And so uh, I was driving to go see my friend. He has a kiosk at the lakefront, okay. and uh, I realized I had this idea where I was going to give a bunch of flowers to people, and it was going to be like a music video idea for them before. But I'm like, what if I just like gave it to strangers? And like, <laughs> truth be told, there was one bouquet of flowers, like <laughs> over and over. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, that's Hollywood. Hollywood magic. <laughs> I was every every so you took it back, yeah. every person. I was like, I was like, hey, can I pretend to, pretend to give you flowers and you act like you just got it? And everyone like acted beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was probably like a, they were like, ah, oh, yeah, I got flowers, and then they were like, I also don't have to worry about getting these into some water. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And so, and the point was to get. I wanted every type of person. Come here. I'm a hold you. I'm a hold you. Hold you, dog. And uh. So yeah, I got old, young. What was your favorite and, part of that video? I like I love <laughs> the reactions, like like everybody's happy reaction. I know. It's the little yeah. things, man. Yeah. It's the small bits. And of the joy. idea, yeah, the idea is great. And the approach too, where you know you, you saw people's faces change as you were like closing in on them with. Like, oh know, yeah! And you saw this transformation from. It's like I'm just going about my day. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm in my head about whatever, and then you know a smile lights up on their face, and they look completely different. So I thought that was cool, a really simple thing. And then I also really enjoy when you when you uh, you pop and mock it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you. <laughs> oh man, it's the best! It's the best. Um. So. Run, run us down the lyrics of Lover Boy. Like, uh, you don't have to, like, you know, yeah, yeah. name names would, or nothing, but, would, like, what, what's, it, what's it all about? So, uh, it's really about me being in my feelings about a girl that I was really into. And uh, I don't, she wasn't reciprocating, but I was just, like, we were still hanging out. And I was just, I was way too into her. And so, uh, it's, it's like, yeah. It's hard. So. It's like that. Like, it's like that. oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. But like, you know, there was something there, but we, you know, you kind of know that you're still not. Sure. Right. So I know you've been drowning for way too long, just kind of in a, a phase where I would say, I don't want to call it depression, but it was in a phase where like, she's been in a deep place. Sure. Uh, late night cravings feeling, you can take that two different ways, like late night cravings feeling way too strong, like I just want to be around you. Uh, and if you want to wait, maybe that's okay, maybe. Like, I told her my feelings, and I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll hold off, and like, I can't stay forever, you better pick up the pace. Lover boy always wants, but he can't have, right? Mm -hmm. Always want, but he can't have. Uh, where his heart on his sleeve, like the last dance, you know, bless, like Michael Jordan, yeah. and like putting it all out there. Um, uh, I'm always stuck in the motions, feeling down like I was deep in the ocean. And then I know you've been here. I know just how it feels. That's self explanatory. Sometimes people are the way they are because they just want to protect themselves from feeling hurt. So you've just been guarding your heart. You've just been trying to do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Oh man, that's my favorite part when it hits that when it hits the word heal, like it feels like the word, you know? Yeah. The the way you sang it, the way the beat progresses to that point. Yeah. It's just really well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So But yeah, it's and then, you know, Maurice had his verse. Um, and it, he goes by Maze as an artist? Yep. How do you spell that? M A Y E S. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, we were bopping it this morning too while we were making breakfast and stuff. Do you have any questions about the tune? Just like, have you, when it comes to lyrics, like, is that something that you that you usually do is write lyrics, or do you do you do do you do um, poetry, or is that kind of the newer thing for you? I did um, <laughs> I did poetry slam my last year of high school. So that kind of got me into the little writing and poetry scene, but I wasn't... You're like, kicking out the you know, Chicago authors and stuff, Yeah, right? and I would go to YCA more so just to watch and, like, be a spectator. But I've always been around that, and I've always been... Yeah, and I've always been, like, writing little raps, like, since I was in high school. Cool. So, when I listen to music in my car, I always, like, freestyle over it. So that's kind of where it all comes from. Yeah. So... Uh, did, uh, did this... This song come about in uh, like the recording session with Maze as a collaboration, or did it start somewhere like more uh, mm-hmm. like on your own with like I know that you play ukulele, I know you make beats yeah. on your iPad. Like, what was like the seed that grew into the single that people can go listen to now? Oh, so like I spend a lot of my time for my when I'm just in my room just playing the instruments like my keyboard. Or my and it was like maybe like midnight or three in the morning and I was like playing the ukulele and I was playing these chords and then all of a sudden the lyrics just started coming and then I recorded it. It's like a black video. And it was just my voice like, oh boy, it was like a little bit different, a much different feel. I showed Maurice that and he's like, it's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you guys a video. Were you in your feelings when you were laying it down? Yeah. Yeah? I'm not gonna show you guys now, but yeah, absolutely. Like so, at that time, it was kind of. It was super. Your catharsis was like happening. Pretty much. That's cool. Yeah, it was pretty. So it was really raw, yeah. and then like it came out as like a pop song. But there's I still rawness to it, as as produced and lovely and you know polished as it is. Yeah, it's, it's still got the rawness because of the topic, the subject matter. The yeah. way that everybody has felt at some point or another uh, this unrequited love for another yeah, human that's being. Pretty much. Where it's like, oh man, this is starting to hurt me. I love this person so much. And it's like, you know, not being, oh nice. Yeah, it's just, as you said, it's just a black, black video. So probably covered the. Yeah, yeah, it's really raw. Super, it's it's like a bedroom tape situation, um, where like Bob Marley, they uncovered like bedroom tapes like after he died. I don't What's know. that? Oh, it's really neat. I'll I'll have to dig it up and uh, share that with you sometime. But I'm sure you find it on YouTube and stuff. But it's like you can hear a quavering in the uh, or a quivering, quavering, quivering. The the voice oh, is like so yeah. raw and like there's so much emotion and it's like. Feel the pain of this, the the feeling that it is being stored in that piece of art. Yeah, and that's what I always loved about it as a healing factor for me, in a way that like I cope with things that are hard to articulate. Is I put it in this like little capsule. Yeah, that feeling and in this it capsule. absorbs it. Yeah, and then you release it. And mm-hmm. It's like this bubble that floats out into the atmosphere, and it, like it bounces into people. And they're like, oh, oh, respond, man, I felt that. Or, you know, or they, they turn that, they, they see the bubble and it's, it's refracted. So it's like a little different than what I experienced, but to them, it means this whole other level of things. And, um, yeah. So to hear that little, just couple seconds that you just played for me and to know where it is now, it's pretty, pretty damn cool. It's like a, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. That, uh, and I'm sure that painting has been a similar kind of, um, avenue for you as far as like self-expression and, 
and um, yeah. dealing with the stuff that life throws at us. But before we move on from the music stuff, I, um, I hope I hope you'd give us a, a little performance uh, of Lover Boy a little bit later yeah. to close out the show. I would love to. That'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be so <laughs> cool. And I'm actually sitting on. I wasn't box, prepared so. for this, but I'll do it. Right. <laughs> you got a ukulele? I'll do it. All right, cool. Great. <laughs> perfect. Um, okay, so yeah, so so talented. The uh, first time I met you. Um, I believe it was just over at Sip of Hope, and you had done the mural in the bathroom. Oh, nope, no, no. Where did I first meet you? At uh, the Metro. Oh, at the block party? Yep. Okay, yeah, that makes even more sense. Yeah. That makes even more sense. Yeah, because I was uh, in the basement. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, I met a bunch of good people that day. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got to talk to Jill from uh, Jill the radio. Jill from uh, Vocalo. From Vocalo. Yeah. Jill's amazing. Um, yeah, and got to, you know, do outreach and meet people and talk to them and have really difficult conversations out in the public, which um, I'm grateful for those experiences because I got to meet people like you and I got to practice. And just like anything, it helps to have reps um, with difficult conversations relating to suicide prevention or mental health resources. Um, so right around that time, you had done an outreach campaign of your own. You had sent this to me and been like, Hey, what do you think? And uh, I just want to show our viewers. Um, and I had seen your artwork actually at a social works meetup thing at their office. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, a um, little mural. And there was a mural, and then you had those stickers where they're all holding signs up, yep. a bunch of different uplift characters, much like the bathroom. That's it. Yep. Uh, by the way. One of the most beautiful things about that mural at SIP is that you put somebody in a wheelchair in that mural. Yeah. Um, that meant a lot to me and Aaron um, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm sure it means a lot to people that have uh, traversed that bathroom uh, in, the, in the several years that it's been open and a part of the community. So yeah. that's cool as hell. Um, and this was kind of like the vibe of that social work sticker that I picked up. Exactly, yeah. And but this this box has changed a couple of times when I've seen messages, mm. and it's awesome because it's like these different succinct little special sayings. Why don't you Why don't you tell us a little bit about like your yeah so uplift character for lack of a better term. yeah so the oh, uplift yeah. character tell us about that um, uplift started as a, a tattoo. It started off as like a sketch that I was gonna tattoo on myself. And uh, I would, this is going to be my first tattoo, so I would draw it all over my body with a Sharpie. Mm -hmm. And I eventually drew it so much it became like second nature. Mm -hmm. I could draw it in my sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was more so just a reminder for myself just to keep on like moving, keep on pushing forward. Um, you got it on there now? Yeah, so it, he's walking originally, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this and, is this is like a riff on it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I, so yeah, I've got the sweatshirt. Cool. Let me grab that. I had a lot of, uh, and during that time, I was like, I was making art, but I had no direction. And I'm like, what? Uh, where do I see myself going with my art? And, and like, I just stumbled upon this. This is the rawest sweatshirt I've ever made. Also, <laughs> on the side, you got the the uh, absolute. Yeah. How's that? Can you see that? All right. You see it okay? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. See, walking. A little animation I, that you did, I saw. I really like that. Yeah. I could make it lo fi. All right. But, and then a little, another riff on it. Yeah, so I I looked at people who inspired me, like um, Hebrew Granty and James mm -hmm. Rivera and like Matthew Hoffman and like Centrock, and I realized that they have something very specific that they're known for and i was like you know that seems like a good like blueprint and i, I at that moment i've been just been making this so much and it made complete sense because it wasn't like arbitrary it, like it had a significant meaning yeah. and i felt like people could respond to it and oh yeah just the impact in just in, as an important way that i responded to it and so then i started making murals and, <laughs> and, and when was your first mural uh maybe 2017 really really yeah. man i i feel i feel like maybe. you you complete these murals with the 
you know, the panache of something that's been doing it for a decade. Uh, but I know I, I forget that you're you're younger. You're a lot younger than me. Yeah. You're just kicking major ass. I'm just I'm just out here trying to get it. I'm like, <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm just trying to get it. So did you did you <laughs> study art in school? I did in high school, yeah. and then I I did like pre pharmacy and pharmacy, but I took like a painting class and a drawing class during my undergrad, which is two years. Damn. And they're like they're like you can't. You can't do art and, and do pharmacy and I said, watch me and then <laughs> 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 But like I've always been an artist. Like yeah. and I never formally like formally learned it outside of like high school. But like I still want to actually go to like university or like get I don't care about getting a degree or anything, but I still wanna take classes. Yeah. Um, but I've always been making art since I was like in elementary school. That's yeah. amazing. That's awesome. And so he had sent sent something over to me, um, much like this, asking about which resources to resources, include. Resources, yeah. And uh, you got the NAMI Chicago Helpline. For those who don't know, if you're in the Chicagoland area, you can call 311 and ask to be connected to the NAMI Chicago Helpline. Hugely helpful resource that can connect you with basic needs, support, housing, things of that nature. Uh, and obviously a, a trove of mental health resources that may be accessible to whatever individual circumstances you're experiencing. But uh, Trevor Project is a huge resource for LGBTQ plus community members. Um, they have a text line, they have a, a chat on their website. Um, there is Howard Brown in Chicago. There is uh, the center on Halstead. And then more nationally, you have like the Veteran Crisis Line and uh, the Crisis Text Line and then the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So Yeah, um, so you were like putting these up yeah. Putting these up in places. And well, so I started after you, after you <laughs> gave me that one, and, I, and then I was like riding the train maybe a couple of weeks later, and I saw it tucked up in, a, in an empty spot. It wasn't like you're blocking in anybody's ass space. You just tucked it in a little. Fit perfectly on oh, it fit perfect. Space. And I was like, yeah, my and boy, you, Myron. You had to fold it like this. Yeah, it was and perfect. It was like, yeah, and it, it just sucked like, right in there. It was like yeah. perfect. But yeah, I was like, so like. How many of these did you make? You I think like lost count? Like a hundred, a hundred. Oh, okay. And I'm like pretty much, I have maybe a handful left. Yeah. So, this is this is cool as a collector's item, and I, I we <laughs> we hold it dear in this house. So. Yeah, I have to. You know, this was pre-COVID, so I want to yeah. mm -hmm, call all these. Well, not I, these ones, more so the UIC. I you got the UIC one. line. Um, I don't know if it's changed with COVID. For sure. I don't yeah. know if this is, but I need to, I might do a version too. Either way, the beauty in this is that whatever resources you put in here, you're making it more attractive by having a bit of your art and your self-expression, something that's colorful, something that's uh, affirming and like humanizing. And then the information is there. This becomes a very valuable tool and a piece of artwork at the same time, rather than just being a bunch of overwhelming resources on a piece of paper. Yeah. That can that can just easily be discarded. No one's gonna throw this out because it's got a badass <laughs> piece of artwork on it. Yeah. And it becomes a very valuable tool for people to, if they don't have anybody to reach out to, uh, well, here's a solution for some options, some alternatives. Yeah. Um, it's not gonna solve everybody's problems, but just ask. Yeah. Like, like, that's the simplicity of it and the, the uplift campaign uh, just very cool to me. Can I ask you one more thing about this and just your work uh, mm. in general? A lot of your uplift characters or other human forms, um, prior to this most recent kind of evolution of your work that I've been watching, mm -hmm. um, no faces. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? Mm. Or is, is, that like a, is, that, is that like a secret ingredient? That I mean, faces make it like, is when you do no face it makes a date, like anyone can see themselves in this. Yeah. That's it, cool. Like once you put a face on it, then you like associate it with something in so, particular. Yeah, facial features might limit Yeah. How a person can like put like, themselves into your it's work. It's like who's that? What does he do? It's like uh, all of a sudden every I you know, normally it's funny like uh, you always ask like What's this? What's this about? Yeah. You know, when you hear art, when you hear music, when you see a painting, what's the story behind this? But when you have something that's kind of 
uh, anonymous. Open to interpretation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that's that's awesome. I feel like that way about how they don't have hair too. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, like it's the same. Thing. Well, I think that's a good segue into this next piece sitting before us. Uh, yeah. Probably one of the mm. favorite things I've ever required. Uh, Aaron and I have a small art collection. Um, since we've been together about six years, we've we've collected quite a few pieces of art. This is a print from Myron, numbered print. Uh, you did a run of twenty. Yeah. Damn. During lucky. COVID, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, this was at the beginning of COVID. So fifteen out of twenty. That's uh, like we've got like the seventy fifth percent, like this <laughs> is the, the end of the batches. So fresh, fresh, and. Um, you want to bring that up a little closer to the yeah oh that looks nice turn it a little get some of that light on it other way yeah <laughs> yeah you can see a lot of that background stuff popping up cool. um that's a cool it's cool what's the name of this piece uh it's Thanks, part son. of my fly away series and this was i don't know if there's a you can set down i don't know if i had a name for it i think it was like called fly away but this is based off of a uh, derrick rose amazing I, I uh i had painted a series of basketball players just in, in dunking mode this yeah. isn't necessarily a dunk but like that he's going in looks like he either like grabbed a wicked rebound or he's about to dunk that shit. yeah right. <laughs> and so like the silhouette was so pretty to me like i had this one of those like a dancer right this you know yeah and like vince carter and D Brown, well, he had like the no look one. Yeah, yeah. And then he he reposted my thing once. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. cool. But yeah, like this is really just everything I love about art in one picture. Oh, cool. I was again pre COVID. I was playing basketball all the time. I was living in the suburbs, and the gym also had a basketball court. There's like three courts, and I was. I went to work out, end up playing basketball. So I was like obsessed. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, I was obsessed with basketball. I've always loved making flowers. I've always loved this little, I forget what it's called, but like this, these little designs in the background. And I'm like, it's very Keith Haring inspired. Keith like, Haring, who inspired Hugh Brantley, who inspired yeah. Myron LeBon, who yeah. like, <laughs> you know, prolific. You know, it's like it's it's like a whole cycle. Yeah. yeah, and my friend Oscar does like cool designs. Oscar like is your boy. Oscar's always Woo! Oscar's going crazy. My goodness, that shit is vivid and <laughs> oh man, it punches you in the face. It's so amazing. It's so good, Oscar. If you Check see that out. This, I'm Check such that a out. Fan of you. He's yeah. got a he's got a show coming up in L.A. and a think space. So keep an eye out for that. Oscar. Oscar Joyo. A no, I'm sorry. O S C A R, J O Y O. He's incredible. Some really beautiful, beautiful, striking images. Yeah. Um, like portraits, X's over the eyes, really vibrant co color. Oscar actually. There's a dark matter. Me. Oh, was that he an Oscar inspir he inspiration? He influenced me to do this, the, to hide the eyes. Can you hold that up for everybody? Yeah. There's another Myron piece that is in our collection. Uh, that That's a one of one. So beautiful. I, I don't know. You, you didn't do prints of that, right? No. So this is the one and only. I could. Maybe yeah, you could. You Maybe could. We we would definitely uh, we would support that um, because it's a beautiful piece. Um, yeah, this is like, this is the art that I want to make. Like, oh yeah, I want to live in photorealism and yeah. and like in abstract and colors and that's like that's everything I want to do as an artist. Yeah, there's little uplifts hiding in the background of this flyaway series. One. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to turn it on its side and kind of point to one for y'all <laughs> because not everything is as it seems in a Myron. So uh, whenever you get a chance to see his stuff in person, um, really take some time to check out those hieroglyphics. Mm. There's there's some serious stuff happening in there and there's mm -hmm. stuff that you can make into your own um, yeah. kind of like and image I'm a, I'm or... Egyptian too. Ooh. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I'm, I've been thinking about like incorporating more of my. Is the wings on this one right here? Is is that one with wings? Yeah, that's like cool. that one like snuck up on me like, like maybe months after I had the, the actual piece, you know, <laughs> and and then same goes for this one. Um, and I believe the subject that you were working off of there was Leon Bridges for this 
this yeah, painting. Yeah. Uh, one of our favorite um, contemporary soul singers. Um, actually got tickets to the Leon Bridges concert at the Chicago Theater from this lovely person. She took oh, me and uh, yeah, that man, was really cool. That was smooth as silk. Um, so smooth. So <laughs> everything it makes. Wow. Yeah. So this stuff really blows my mind because um, when you say photorealism, you you capture like this form it's very realistic these portraits these faces uh your newer work the plants and the flowers and stuff like that that's kind of like uh like moving into the space and stuff like that but there's this dolly kind of like warped beautiful kind of uh aesthetic also where like that's like you said i, I want to live here or whatever you said um i feel that like i want to live there too it's, <laughs> just like a beautiful land that you've created Thank in your you. paintings yeah yeah i like i want my paintings to be like uh inviting yeah yeah they most definitely are um when is your next uh exhibition is it that uh, one art art out west is that yeah is art, that the next one october 1st awesome. so you you guys saw a lot of what's gonna be in the show oh you yeah we that? got a little sneak peek when he was uh when he was moving he threw a little house house gallery show and yeah. you got to see stuff that will blow your damn mind yeah so the middle room is yeah where i'm gonna put it there cool okay. I think yeah so myron had like different rooms for sort of different periods yeah and different, like like uh yeah more experimental or more <laughs> the, the miscellaneous yeah room. yeah which That's was amazing. a really cool way to yeah. set it up yeah yeah and you go on his Instagram and you see this this painting right now that uh, beautiful woman holding a bouquet it's like so bountiful and there's these like juicy spherical flowers that look like blueberries that you just want to like take a bite out of. Um, that's the kind of stuff that was in that middle room to kind of yeah. give you a reference point. So lush, like um, you're doing a lot more foreground stuff too. I noticed like like, um, like the faces or no like, like there was like there was like more stuff like happening. Oh yeah, I put pyramids in that one. Here. Yeah, and you got like trees and like all sorts of different like yeah, so landscape like, stuff. It's like imagine this, but with like plants now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, and faces. And, and your colors. Yeah. Like Do you playing remember? With, yeah. Playing with ombres and colors. Yep. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when we did, we all did that community art show at Matthew Hoffman's You Are Beautiful Space yeah, yeah, yeah. with the boards, the oh, You Are yeah. Beautiful, and you made those cactuses, uh -huh. and I was like blown away by the fact that I could look at that board that you made that had no uplift, it had no, and still, it had no, like, uh, I guess, discerning characteristics that made me think of you other than you have just a very um, true style yeah uh, well where it's like, like that's a myron this newer sweatshirt is like kind of similar yeah. where you're like it's not it's not like uplift but right. it, it is there's like something about it i think it it's that... the palette yeah it's, it's this, yeah and your shapes I the shape yeah like you can tell these squiggles are have become very like yeah <laughs> i include these in a lot of my paintings now it's which really you were weird. saying like with uplift with wanting to be kind of like a more of like a local or Chicago artist. That's kind of what people do is they make something that is them and then you can branch out. Yeah. Of Cause I don't want to just be known for one thing. No. no yeah. I want to like, I still want to make art and like music and like, yeah, more music on the way. Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like once people put you in the box, it like limits you. And then, and then you, you come outside of the box and you're like, why did I get out of the box? Like, yeah. When people people got mad at Leon Bridges, for example, after yeah, his, his, his album coming home, then he put out I think it was called Beyond. Yeah. Well, it's like or, uh, good news or good uh, or bad news or bad bad bad, bad news. Bad bad news. I was like in the album. I forgot what the name of the album. The you actual know, record has a lot more different sounds. Yeah, and the people it's a departure like, from like yeah, straight yeah, ahead, exactly. like Sam Cooke kind of thing. Um, so my friend's like, I, I don't like the Bridges. Well, like, Gold Digger sound, the one that just came out, even even further removed. It's like he's just he's trying to like. But he's just making art. Really. Yeah, he's trying to be yeah. him. Well, yeah. like people people used to like 
threaten Bob Dylan for going electric, right? right if right. you want to go to like back to like one of the original Newport people, Folk Festival, people freaked out yeah, because like, he like instead guitar, of being Bob. folk, he went electric, and they were like, they were calling him Judas and telling him to God. die, you know? It's, and like, it's, it's like, not even your art; they act like they own his art. You, you know? want him to stay the same for fifty years? No, you don't want that. Actually, yeah, there was an amazing. You gotta evolve, and and. Yeah, everybody everybody changes, people's people's minds grow. You gotta you gotta go with it. Yeah, there was an amazing write up uh, interview Leon Bridges did when this new record came out, and he talked about uh, having thoughts of suicide, having yeah. thoughts of not wanting to be around anymore because he was somebody that got really lucky. He started playing, and within a year was a mega star. Like, yeah. He was just some dude that worked at a sp at like a like a, a shop uh, in Texas. It's a lot of just pressure. started playing, and then was just coming home was massive. It was a massive success, and then he got put in that box, and he didn't feel like he could change, and he didn't feel like he could talk to anybody about it, even though he's successful and he probably set for money and he, whatever you know. Um, Do you hear it, Blue Mesa? None of that matters. Yeah, that song on the new record. Yeah, it's all about that. Yeah, and it's about him uh, and his his own kind of journey, and then like kind of breaking through and being like, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to my friends about this and let them know that like I'm messed up by all of this stuff the world's casting upon me, and you know when you do that, most of the time if you got people in your corner that are true and authentic and are gonna support you. They'll help you like kind of get across that finish line of what you're actually wanting to aspire to be rather than what everybody's telling you you have to stay. Yeah. You know, uh, that change, that evolution um, and trying to push yourself into like new territory is, is it's a healthy thing. But um, even somebody who's, you know, kind of made it, quote unquote, can still struggle with their mental health because of the pressure to just stay you know, like palatable to one particular group of people. Yeah. But he's got to be him. He's got to make the music that speaks to him. And Blue Mesa's, tell me if, what, what your impression of that song was. Oh, it's just, it just the idea of, like, being at the top but still feeling alone and still feeling like he can't reach out and get help. Yeah. Like, do you need help? No. Yeah. Like, you know, he... Yeah. he it's so amazing. Maybe not being in this place of darkness when you're like you have everything around you and you still and you still feel like you're you're drowning yeah it's kind of you know yeah and like and, it, and it's just a testament that like money fame power and all that stuff that doesn't mean anything really. no. that reminds me of that billy eilish app that billy eilish video oh mm -hmm. the everything she's i like, want to yeah she's like drowning in it she's like it like there's like yeah water at the end. i feel like it's more toxic than anything to like get all this stuff i think we're told that like uh you're supposed to be famous and get millions of dollars and once you get all this this money and and, and fame that you're gonna be happy but it's really like quite the opposite i think yeah. like you should just strive to have good relationships with your friends and your family and, and like yeah. the people around you we still like pursue your personal goals but just knowing that uh, you need a team and you need healthy people around you to to be able to appreciate the things, you yeah. know, to share your 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 bounty with. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you get there because the band that's backing them up on that Gold Digger song. Yeah. They are sick. They're yeah. just just disgustingly talented players, and um, you know, and you maybe at one point in time might have felt like you couldn't. Also, be a musician that you had to focus on art, yeah. like to really, really like uh, aspire to be an artist. But like, you had a boy like Maze be like yeah, encouraging like, you and be like, no, you can you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you, he sees like the potential that I see in myself. Yeah, like he sees what like, like, other people like, don't like. We're we're working on the song that he saw off my SoundCloud. He's like, I'm gonna produce this. Like, no. this is this is really good. Like you think so? He's like, yeah, like this is good. <laughs> and so then I showed him like the snippet just now, and like, yeah. mm, mm. like, you mm. know, it moved me. I make stuff that I find beautiful, but like you don't, not other people won't necessarily find it as beautiful as you do. Yeah. But like, when someone sees eye to eye with you in the same way that you see, 
yeah. with your stuff. It's like it's cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. So nice, man. Is uh, there anything else that you want people to know about what you're working on now? Or mm. so October first, you have a thing, and yeah. yeah, and the gallery is called Art Art West. Art West. It's, uh, yeah, it's off like California and Bolt. Nice. It's in the West Side, and mm -hmm. uh, it's I made a mural that said like you deserve to be happy. Yeah, much like and yeah, she found it. She found that building. Clearly. That mural really? is where at. It's on. It's like the same place, California and Polk. Right over there. Seven fifty South. California. You got murals all over the city. I yeah. Keep track of them all. <laughs> so that's in the West Side, and and uh, I was working on all that stuff you saw in that room for like they have some big art show and like I don't know like three shot with someone in like LA or New York or like yeah some prestigious type of opportunity. But I'm like, you know what? This is like this is like the perfect opportunity because the mural is literally like the right. art on the board and like and it's also, got the environmental aspect of it yeah it's like the weather had changed it since you painted it and it's like also it's like uh to put it in a place like the west side of chicago shows that you know you don't you don't have to be in some like crazy cool environment or like a place with money and affluence that that doesn't yeah. That's art shouldn't just exist in that space. It should yeah. exist everywhere. Yes. Right. And, and just because somewhere is more disinvested doesn't mean it's less worthy Hell of, yeah. of making art. So like why can't I put my best art in this place? Well that's why the news outlets hopped on and they're yeah. like, This is badass. This guy's doing something. Yeah, I got He's not just putting a mural up in in a gentrified neighborhood because they got money to pay a muralist. He's putting it up to beautify a neighborhood that matters and is, is one yeah. of the invisible spaces, right? Um, of our city. And I encourage people to go uh, on a walkabout sometime, either down to 18th Street and all the murals along that train trestle, or uh, Hubbard has a ton of awesome murals. And learn about, you know, look up the tags, learn about different street artists out there making environments beautiful in the urban landscape. Um, all over the city um and then if you see one in a cool spot you know take a picture of it tag the artist show it on your socials and um you know let other people know that these things exist because it's badass mm -hmm. who who did a piece on you was it w wttw uh yeah them and cbs and cbs did one nice. on yeah. that, that arrow i did uh two yeah two media things and then um usa today featured it too Oh man, yeah, that's cool. that so cool. That is so uh, you cool. Know, get it there. <laughs> uh, for scale, uh, the last question I have about that mural. About how many gallons of paint did it take? Because <laughs> that is a big ass wall. Like, sure, how many square feet would you say that is? Wow. You don't even know, huh? Do you know how many gallons of paint that it took? Did you gotta go to the store again? Like, a couple there's times? at least two, three gallons, two gallons per color. Okay. At least. And then there's the miscellaneous colors, but the background colors was at least like... Yeah. Did you yeah. have to take multiple trips to the store? Well, this is... It's really nice because like the owner bought all this stuff for me. Oh, damn. I did nice. it for free. I just... Because I was like, yo, I just want to paint your thing. He's like, fine. You... If you paint it, I'll buy all the materials. Ooh. And so cool. this was the first time that we... Uh, that I did everything like the right way. Like, you know, if I don't get paid for something, I'm just going to, like, buy paint from Home Depot. Yeah. And the cheapest paint I can find is, just, like, paint something nice. Yeah. But he's like, we're going to do this the right way. So we got brick primer, and we primed it. He got, like, two big, not even gallons, like. Just even bigger, big, like a barrel of primer. <laughs> of brick primer, and just this, like. Five-gallon buckets, This, right? like, homeless dude was walking down, he's selling little W's. He's like, I used to be a painter. You need help? And then Omar, the owner, is like, yeah. So he Hell gave, yeah, man, he gave him some money. The dude primed the whole wall in like two hours. That's Like so awesome. professionally and so beautiful. Wow. And so uh, we did the brick primer and then and then he did the paint over that. That's awesome. Yeah. It good. yeah. It's a beautiful mural. You should go see it. You should also go to the show. The, yeah. You'll, so, you'll have all that new work. Right? And then uh, Lexi, uh, who runs our West, is going to have her. Her art as well. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Hell yeah. Well, um, this is this has been awesome. This has been our first uh tomorrow show episode and 
Aaron, did, how'd you think it went, Aaron? Good. I thought it went awesome. Yeah. I thought it made me super happy, and I hope the community uh, took a lot from today. Uh, follow the Twitch channel, follow the socials for the Hope for Us Network, and specifically at Myron Levan. That's M Y R O N L A B A N. And uh, they've dropped the event bright for Way Out West down oh, below. Nice. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. Nice. So, uh, yeah. And we're going to end the show today uh, with a little bit of live music. Yeah, there's that um, uke. Myron's going to play the ukulele. I'm going to join him on this beatbox here. And, um, and we'll say good, good afternoon. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll be back with the tomorrow show in two weeks. All right. Keep tuning in to the Hope for, Net Hope for Us Network, uh, transforming mental health in our communities. All right, man. It's on you. I know you've been drowning for way too long. Late night cravings feel way too strong. If you wanna go, baby, that's okay. I can't stay forever. You better pick up the pace. Love the boy always wants what we can't have. Thanks, y'all. See you tomorrow.